Good evening. We call the Hayward and City Council, Hayward and Iowa, to order on Wednesday, February the 10th already, 2021, at 5.30 p.m. All present are staff. We're all kind of spread out. Uh, Travis uh, Waterman not with us today. He's uh, a, little warmer, a little warmer climate, so we hope he brings some of that back with him. So. We have a number of resolutions tonight and other agenda items and uh, some other discussion and again continuation discussion of the fiscal year uh, fund budgets. So we start out with the approval of the January 27th, 2021 City Council meeting minutes. You've had those in your packet. So a motion for that. So moved. Moved by Rob, seconded by Tim. All in favor, then, of the January 27th, 2021 City Council meeting minutes say aye. 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 Those opposed? That passes 5 to 0. Next, we move to claims for payment, and we'll start with Rob for questions, please. No questions. Okay. Jen, do you have any questions? No questions. John? None, thank you. Okay. Travis? None, thank you. Tim? None. So moved. There's been a motion by Tim. Is there a second to that? A second. Seconded by Jen. Any questions, clarifications? Hearing none, all in favor then of claims for payment say aye. 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 Those opposed? That also passes five to zero. Open business from the community. Brad will talk in a little bit. Eric, pretty quiet. Okay. <laughs> Moves us on to the mayor's report. Um, our congratulations to Annie and Todd with the opening of the Roosters Midwest Steakhouse. We're excited and thankful for their grand opening and wish them much success. At the recent Hayward and Fireman Ball, Mike Van Bucko was voted on by his peers to be the Fire Person of the Year. Other recognition was given to John Burt for 15 years of service, Nick Strong for 10 years, and Tony Barnes for five years of service. Also, Jason Anderson retired from the department after 24 years of dedicated service. We thank them and all of the members of the fire department for their service and the commitment to our community. There have been a lot of great things happening up at West Sioux, including the FFA Blue Jacket Awards Ceremony, Students of the Month for Middle School, and fun and exciting athletic events with boys basketball and girls basketball and wrestling. Good luck to the Falcons as they start the tournament trail in basketball and continue at districts and the state duels for wrestling. As Rob and I commented last night at the state duels, uh, much more exciting than city council meeting minutes and right. meeting times, and uh, it was a fantastic duel last night. Both crowds were, were large and uh, enthusiastic and, and great sportsmanship on both sides. With the extreme cold weather, please remember to care for your pets as they may be outside. Also, a reminder that you can sign up for the level billing for your, your utilities through our office here, and that Midsu has assistance with utility bills. And lastly, it's Valentine's Day this weekend. Please show kindness to others around you, care for the elderly, praise the younger generation, and remember these words from the author Helen Keller. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. It must be felt from the heart. So, blessings to all of those that uh, get to enjoy tam family time with Valentine's Day this weekend. We'll move next to staff reports, and we'll start with uh, Corey with the Chief of Police. Okay. Larry, please. <clears throat> Just give you a quick update here. Uh, we're doing our normal process of our a lot of webinars, uh, a lot of web meetings, so on and so forth. So we still continue to do Northwest Iowa development, um, different things like enterprise or energizing entrepreneurs, so on and so forth, um, all at a remote distance. Um, we have about 52 active clients uh, that we're working with. Um, and with those, um, on top of those, we also have been informing local business owners of different grants, forgivable loans, and other assistance that is available for the, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we have a couple of new clients coming to us through CVN, which is our kind of our recruitment side uh, that we do through Northwest Iowa Development. 
Uh, our first loan since I've been here, the first loan that we packaged since I've been here has been paid back. That was for the uh, chamber spec home, and so that has been sold, and those dollars have come back in. So that's another 135000 to loan back out to local businesses. Um, other main projects that we've been working on, uh, been, of course, working a lot on the People's Bank project, uh, Big Sioux uh, with their um, relocation, uh, Roosters opening, and uh, it's great to see that they're open. It was one of our first projects that our office worked on. Um, and then we've also got a couple of downtown businesses or a couple of businesses looking at downtown, one from outside of town and one from uh, a local startup. Uh, in addition to that, about 90%, just so you guys know, about 90% of our clients are local clients, in other words, existing businesses that we're working with, but uh, we still try to work on that other 10% on the recruitment side. I will say that's down from this time last year, just because a lot of the projects that we had been working on have kind of been put on ice until things kind of pan out over the next probably 12 months or so. Uh, the Banner Committee, which consists of three um, members of the Downtown Committee, uh, is working on their final banner, which will be the Spring and Summer Banner. We plan to have that uh, purchased, uh, ordered and purchased within the next 30 days, and then uh, those will be going up uh, hopefully with the first thaw uh, that we get. <laughs> and um, we've also got a client that is interested in some of our downtown window um, advertising ideas that we've come up with, um, so I'll have more on that particular project. Uh, this will give us a chance to be able to work with some of the building owners who have empty storefronts uh, and be able to uh, promote other businesses, promote community things uh, in those vacant storefronts. Uh, we continue our work on our yearly um, Haywarden Community Magazine. Um, they've been reaching out uh, to a number of businesses in the community and a number of those have been secured. So um, I believe right now we're at about 24 pages of content, uh, but I think we may uh, get a few more pages, maybe 28 to 30 by the time we get done. Um, one of the newest things on our plate is the Iowa Cafe Pilot Project. Um, this is uh, going to be, give an opportunity for seniors who income qualify to be able to actually go to any of our local restaurants and be able to pick items off of menu and be able to purchase those and then it's purchased through uh, a state grant uh, to help seniors not only get food but also help them interact with others, get them um, rather than just bringing the food to their house, this allows them to interact with other seniors uh, throughout the community. And uh, one last thing is we're, we're still working on our library grant, uh, the Rural Innovation uh, Grant that uh, just came open to apply for, and we're looking at uh, tech machines that the library could use uh, to be able to sponsor more STEM projects, uh, STEM opportunities, and then also expand what the library can do to the community other than just being a library. That Iowa Cafe project sounds really good for the uh, senior groups that they can interact and get uh, get a meal too. Uh, yeah, it's a, a pretty innovative project they've done. We would be the only second community in Iowa to do it. Uh, they are set up in one community in the state right now, and uh, we might actually be one of the larger ones. I'm trying to get almost all of our restaurants to participate if they can. Um, the current community that has it only has one restaurant that's uh, doing uh, the project. So we would actually be the largest if we were able to secure a number of them. And from what I'm seeing the price points being, I think we should be able to get something worked out. And it would give people an opportunity for dinners, for breakfasts and lunches. Um, and I, like I said, I can get into a little bit more detail as we get a little bit farther down the road. So, uh, and then I guess one last thing I forgot to put on the list was the Habitat Project uh, is moving forward. Uh, they own the lot on uh, North um, Central Avenue here, and they are now reaching out into the community. Uh, a lot of faith based community and um, getting partners within that. And so you'll see a lot of activity on that over the next couple of months with a hopeful, hopeful build time of some time in uh, July or possibly August. Thank you. Jacob, how are the numbers? Well, I mean, everything is uh, coming along. We're doing layer tweaks and just prep for whatever decisions you guys end up making. And um, I'm currently in a school right now online, so through Zoom here at the office, working towards my certification. I should have it by the uh, end of this year. So. Good, and that's a clerk school, and that helps 
helps us to know other than Mr. Pickner as our attorney if we're doing things correctly here in our city council meeting minutes. And you're going to take a little vacation, so if we send a little with you and it's our money you make on it, then how does that work? <laughs> it'll, it'll, it, it'll, I know it'll be your money. I will. <laughs> yeah, never mind. We'll move on. Vegas. Is, just saying. Hey, Mike. <laughs> how are you? Well, I don't really have anything to report outside of the uh, current agenda items. I did get an update yesterday on our housing rehab grant. They have the first three houses selected. They're under historical review right now. This is probably been the longest that we've ever had to wait on these. But I think COVID took a lot of people to stay to stop doing things. And uh, so hopefully we're getting back on track. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. And, and Travis didn't leave you anything as he was gone, so yeah, everything's... I didn't have anything new to report. Um, okay. Obviously, wintertime, you know, Quieter. most of our projects were wrapped up. Uh, so as soon as the uh, ground thaws, we can get things going again. But uh, for right now, everything is just status quo. Okay. That's not a bad thing. Anything from council members? Questions for them or any comments that you have that uh, need to be brought out? before we move on. Quiet. We'll move on to other agenda items. Agenda item number three. Uh, this would be a Hayward and Solid Waste Update by Brad Wellinga from the Hayward, excuse me, Warren City Sanitation. We could move you over here, Brad. That'd be okay. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. It's yeah. been a great working relationship as we've transitioned with Orange City Sanitation. Yeah, well, thank you all for the work. I appreciate the work as well. Um, yeah, two years ago, I came and took over the contract, and a uh, little rundown of of kind of how it happened is well, you all you all know what happened with Independence, and I came in. So, with that being said, uh, I'd like to keep things going in the right direction and improve on it if a little bit if we could. And just a little rundown of, of the past two years, what I've done. Well, I had to purchase the containers for the from the commercial accounts, the dumpsters from the finance company, and that, that cost me $50,000 to them. And then I had to purchase a truck to come in here and service the community, and that cost me a little over $100,000. So basically I spent $150,000. And uh, I'm looking to improve in the community and with that, I'd like to put toters in the community. And I think you all know what toters are. And uh, there's a couple advantages to toters. It, it cleans things up. It looks a, like, a little nicer. It's a little easier for the customers. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't know I was on television. I would have I done my hair then if I had known. <laughs> Actually, the camera's back there. So. <laughs> okay, good. But... Uh, Toters, they're, they're an automated garbage can with wheels on them and a lid that's attached. The lid does not come off. And they're 65-gallon uh, or 95-gallon. I think a few of you might have them in town here ready, and the ones I think you have are 95 gallons. The, the ones I put in most communities are 65s for garbage anyway. And one of the reasons for a 65 is it promotes recycling. That's, that's one of the reasons for toters. Too. And another reason for toters is we get people that will put out, they'll go to Walmart and they'll buy uh, 50 or 55 gallon garbage cans and they'll put two, three of them out. And if we don't pick them up, I didn't do my job. You know, so they're actually throwing away more than they should and they're not recycling. Most communities have a 65 gallon limit. Actually, years ago, the DNR made us come up with limits at our communities of what it was. And uh, most of them are 65 gallons. And then recycling, you know, there's, there's really no limit to that. They, they want to promote that. But if you only have a 65-gallon limit, you do recycle. Now, you don't have to. If you want to have a 95-gallon, you can, but then you pay a little more. And uh, the base rate is for a 65, and then... Like I said, it promotes recycling. In your, in your, 
Well, you're probably you're probably by yourself. Uh huh. Uh huh. See now where the you know and and one of the reasons behind that uh, having a 65 gallon toter or you can't have a 95. So yourself, you have a 65, then that's all you pay for. Now your neighbor across the street that has four children at home, or uh, let's say there's a house that has two families living in it, they pay for a bigger container or two 65s, whatever they want. Or they can have two 95s if that's what they want. And uh, I do have some communities where they have two or three 95s every week. Big houses, this is. And, and uh, there's a lot of Amazon boxes that come in these homes. Yeah. But uh, so that's what I would like to see the Haywarden move to. Um, just about every community around here has toters in the city. And uh, with that being said, for a 60 gallon toter, it costs $45 a piece. And a 96 gallon toter is $51 a piece. So with, with that cost in mind, I'm going to use 1,000 homes in Haywarden as a number to base my figures off of. So with 1,000 homes, if I take 1,000 60s, one for every customer, and I bought 1,000 96s, one for every customer, that'd come to $96,000. Well, I would have to pay for that somehow. So I would have to ask for an increase. Now, a few of the cities that I've done in the past, I've asked for $1.35 per home per container. So with two containers, that'd be uh, $2.70. Well, I can, I can do better than that. And I'm willing to offer the city of Haywarden the containers that would be needed for $2 per month per home. Now, if you take $2 per month per home, that'd be $2,000 a month times 12 is 24. It'd take me four years to get to 96,000, correct? That is, that is your city, however they want to do that. If they want to allow the customers that have the container to use the container and not pay, the, pay that dollar for that container, I'm okay with it. I, I have no problem. Yep. No, I understand that, and I have no problem with that at all. The only problem is is with the billing mm -hmm. and keeping track of it. So if your city is is willing to go through the the hassle of 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 keeping track of it and stuff like that, I have no problem. Now, when I own the containers, if uh, if something happens to them that they're, they're ten year warrantied. They are so. I prorate them. If somebody uh, throws hot ashes in it, which they do, or drives over it with their car, which they do, if they've had it for three years, mm -hmm. they would only pay accordingly to, you know, you take the original cost of forty five, and divide it by ten years. So if if three years is paid off, they'd only owe that much. And after ten years, then. If they wreck it, it's replaced free of charge. Um, some communities own the toters themselves. And, and I have no problem if you guys would want to buy the toters, but it's a, it's a big investment. And then you run into the problem where who's going to take care of it when, the, when one wheel breaks, if a lid breaks. or So uh, I, I prefer to own them myself, actually. Um, now, when I give you the cost of these at that $45, that's, that's not including tax or, or delivering one to every home. I take care of that. And that's not shipping to get them here either. So there's a little bit more to that. But uh, uh, I think the community would like it. I think you, you've probably all seen other communities with them. 
And uh, like I said, there's there's definitely advantages to them. Um, I think it would increase your recycling numbers in town here. Um, and I think it would it would look nicer. Uh, I also would be sending a different truck here. It wouldn't be a, a two-man truck. It's a one-man truck that has an automated arm that picks them up and empties them and sets them back down. So uh, it's an advantage for me as well down the road with having to have employees. It's getting harder and harder to find people to hang on back. Um, so you put two at each home, one for recycling, one for garbage. Yes. garbage. Now, some communities I have have a 65 of each. Um, some communities have a 65 for garbage and a 95 for recycle. You know, you folks are every other week with recycle. And, uh, you know, now there's another thing my company offers that most other companies do not offer. With this, with this less personable service, it is. We, we have tickets like this. If a citizen has extra stuff, whether it be recycling or garbage, whether it's Christmas or Thanksgiving or graduation, this is a dollar tag. And that's good for like a 30-gallon can, extra can, or a black garbage bag. And they stick this on there, purchase it from our office, or we give them to the city office here where they can purchase them. And then if they have to, they can get extra stuff picked up. Because if they just throw a pile next to the can, the driver won't just get out there and pick them up. And uh, if they want to have, like I said, two 60 gallons, they can, but then they pay more accordingly, you know. <clears throat> like for a 95 over a, a 60, that's 30 gallons per week more with a, a four week month period. It costs them $4 a month more for a 95 than the normal 60. So with you owning the 95s, I think was I trade a 95 for, for a yeah. <laughs> you live in Orange, you must be from Orange City. You <laughs> was there for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that's, like I said, that's, and you know, this, I'm, I'm just making all this as uh, option for the city of Haywarden. I'm not forcing in any way this to happen. Um, most of my communities have asked for, asked for it. And uh, I know there was, Mr. DeBryan had mentioned it when I first started about this, that, that there was a possibility that your city was interested in this in the future. So that's why I'm kind of... Any thoughts on it? Or? Well, I know as when I, I personally, when I drive by uh, on garbage days, there are a lot of people that, unfortunately, uh, for the community and your staff, they throw just bags out there or they have a garbage container out there with bags all around it. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I know that our, our recycling numbers are, are, as a community, are poor. Yeah. And if we could increase the recycling at, you know, at, at ease to the, the citizens, it would certainly seem to make much more sense and it would be a benefit, I think, for our community and also for your business. It, it keeps the cats, birds, dogs out of it. Yep. Yeah. Especially those that have to have their garbage sitting outside, don't have them inside or something. Those toters are durable enough where you can keep garbage in them. And we really like ours just for ease of going in and out and I think that it sounds pretty reasonable for per month or something well, like I, that. So. I, I will give you a, just a little rundown here. I just I just started a community six months ago, Primgar, Iowa, and uh, I put toters in there and their rate starting out is sixteen fifty per home per month. So that's quite that's a little bit more than where you would even be at. And, the, and that's a, a half hour drive to the landfill and we're a good hour from Hayward here. So 
And if you've checked in any other communities or do check with any other communities, you'll see that that uh, you're at a very fair, very fair rate here in Hayward. And uh, other council thoughts? Is there a time frame in mind that you would? Well, hope that's we why would? I'm. That's why I'm here. Okay. Um, when I first started in Hayward, and I bid a two-year contract with the option of extending for a third at the same rate I am right now. And, and I'm okay with that. I would actually take that third if, if that's all I have. But I would like to do this and then go possibly with another three-year contract with this to pay for them toters. And uh, it takes a couple months to get them and to get them in place. So if I was to order them, it'd be nice to get them in place like like May or so. I'm not sure when the contract actually renews. I think it might be like the 1st of June or something. Yes. Okay, so that's kind of why I'm I'm a little early, better ahead than behind. And uh, And for clarification, were you looking that they would purchase the toters or that's amortized out? In the, is that what you were talking about, being amortized out in the price? Um, no, I would rather just keep just rent them. Okay. I'd rather own them. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then that would be the $2 a month for yeah. one right. of each? Yeah. That'd right. be one of each. Yep. yep. That'd be, you'd be ready to go then. Okay. Now, and then I, like I said, I'd ask for a three-year contract. Now, I am interested, and actually, if, if you're interested, talk mm -hmm. it over. I w would go with a five-year contract if you want, but I would ask for a a one dollar increase after three years so you're at 1335 right now you'd be at uh, 1635 at the end of five years now if you look at all these other you know, a lot of the other towns around that's not a bad number to be at in five years and uh, but that's like I said. It's it's that's why you guys are on the council because you get to make them decisions. Well, is it practical, Mike, to have? I mean, I got two of those toters now, and actually, I never. I mean, once a month is enough for my garbage. So I, you know, it's a big one. Yeah. And even then, it might only be half full. Or. Yeah. Brad and I have had that conversation about. <clears throat> I'm just wondering what to do with it, Dan. I mean, yeah. so, so, <laughs> you, you buy the buy back program? <laughs> you, got a, you got a spray can or something? Yeah. I can just paint it the same color? Well, you know, the color doesn't bother me. I mean, like I said, if, if you want to where you don't pay $2 a month on your bill, if you want to adjust that. Well, I, I don't mind the $2. I'm just wondering if it's practical for our city to mess around. The billing part seems like it might be complicated. I, 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 I really, yeah, I, I, I really think. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, you know, you can, I've seen people take old garbage cans and, and clean them out and use them for storage in their garages, whether they put, you know, I've seen people use them for, well, a 95 gallon would be pretty big for cat or dog food, I guess, but. Uh, I've seen them. My dog eats a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be a problem. You know, and, I think and some people, I've seen people use right? their old cans for, I, I've seen this with most all the communities. What do we do with our old cans? And I've seen them use them for yard waste that they take to the yard waste dump. And, and uh, some people have just thrown away. People have asked if I could recycle them. And it's sad, but they can't recycle a... Uh, you know, I, I probably would allow that, yeah. I would what I would ask you, see now, here's something we have to do too, is we have to have this on separate days, and your recycling is already now, so nobody would be upset about that, but like, you don't want to set two of them cans next to each other, because then that truck can't, he's got to get in there. So, you know, with that being said, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we uh, stress people to do with the 95 is to break your boxes down or cut them into pieces. You know, if they slam their pizza boxes in there and the truck comes and does this shake thing and and then they call later and say, you didn't empty my can. <laughs> yeah. And that... So is this something we can put on the next council agenda? Because obviously the logistics we're not going to figure out tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, Brad, from your perspective? Not, not that I can really think of. Okay. Any questions from council before we... Uh... I'm happy with the way they are. You guys are working and stuff, and if yep. you want to do a five-year, I'd have no problem with that at all. Because I think well, they're doing excellent work, and I'd agree. It, it's amazing how fast two years goes. It's just yeah, you know. Plus, I like the price. I mean, it's really reasonable. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish somebody would take my cans if I don't get to use them again. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea. You got to let it keeps it warm, Done. or keeps it dry. I mean, they have held up well since we've gotten those. I mean, I, yeah. I bet ours are 15 years old or better already. Yeah. So, and these are basically they're pretty durable cans. Yeah, they're the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've had the, I buy them from the same company, and I've had I hardly, very seldom. Like I said, hot ashes is about the only thing that goes through them. Charcoal. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> but I think you, I, you really notice it. You probably, you folks probably don't. But when I go down a street of a community and I see all the cans standing by the curb, all facing the same way, lined up, I, I think it it looks nice. But uh, you have a color picked out already? Or are you uh, actually, we have green for garbage and then blue for recycling. Yep, dark blue for recycling. Yep. I've seen those pink ones, and it it's just it sticks out in the yard so bad. Yeah, see, I have one community that will not allow any other colors in there at all. You know, and them pink ones are breast cancer awareness ones. Yeah. But I'm just saying they're, they're yep. so hideous when they're sitting next yep. to the house. I mean, yep. just, yep. It's, it's a thumb that's sticking out. And they will not let us bring them into that community. That's that's the Dakota Dunes. They will not let us put them in there. But uh, the green I blends in real well. Like Dakota Dunes, I can see that. Mm -hmm. And we use a little darker blue, like them bowls with your candy, and that's called Pepsi Blue. A lot of communities use that for the recycling, and I chose a little darker blue because it doesn't show grease and it it looks cleaner longer, I think. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, those items on the next agenda, then. Okay. Next is discussion of the fiscal year 22 general fund and enterprise fund budgets. Which somewhat brings us to five also somewhat. Again, as we talked last time, three, three options is if we, you know, try to raise more revenue or we make a cut somewhere or we raise a levy. Right. The, the last budget we had an extra transfer of 25000 in there. Um, I backed that out of his current budgets that are in there. And um, raising the levy is, is one option. Uh, another option is finding places where we can make that amount up. Or the third option is to uh, transfer that 25000 back out of the utilities into, into the general fund. <coughs> I've given you a sheet of paper that shows other entities that that we give money to. Um, and and I, I don't think some of those are an option. I do want to point out that 
Creek Sewer Morality Historical Society, you'll see their donation there at the request of, of that group. They have said that they didn't need any money this year and didn't feel right uh, taking it on a year they didn't need it. That doesn't mean it'll be back at some point, but uh, so that one is off the list. That one's usually 8,000. So, um, so, I mean, all, all of those those options are on the table. If we raise the levy, we're looking at a 15.0, $15.04, point something, something cents levy increase, 44 cents, basically. Uh, so, and we can do that. Uh, the other option is, is we find something that, you know, we don't want to, that we don't want to fund. Uh, Mike, so what is going on with, you have rides in here. Have we heard any update on that? Rides, I've talked to them. Uh, they have told me that they will be back in service. They do have a, a rides bus here, not quite as often, but they do come here uh, once or twice a week yet. They pull the driver in from Sioux Center. They're actively looking for a driver. So if their plan is to come back to the community, then you know it's something that we, we should budget for. Okay. They have refunded us this whole year's uh, okay. donation. Okay. So what they're doing now is, is when they're coming in, we're, we're not actually supplementing. Okay. Habitat, that's a one-time? Habitat is a one-time deal. It was on the house. Uh, we've talked to development. You know, we're, they, if you remember, they asked for $7,000. Mm -hmm. Talk to development. Development has offered to um, go in half with that. Uh, golf course equipment, of course, as I told you before, we really never budgeted that. We would just take it from the capital equipment fund without having any way to fill that back in. Well, what that has caused is a, a deficit or so if we need a new payload or we need a new uh, police car we need a new fire truck the money we've come up short so we did include that into the budget that uh, rough mower i didn't notice how expensive golf course, course equipment was until the last couple of years but uh, so it will not be 56000 every year, but next year if they need another more, and I'd have to look at the schedule, it's going to be 25. So uh, that number is going to vary depending on the equipment they need. I know this mower is the most expensive one that they have to buy. It'll be more of an equipment fund type of thing than yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> individual yeah. type of. Is that something that can be balanced out? Yeah, we, we, we want to start balancing it out after after this this big purchase. Um, because yeah, this is taking a big one to hit on that. We figure I think we're figuring maybe if we if we do twenty thousand a year after this, we'll be where we need to be on it. Well, I'd like to see the chamber donation get cut was with the on the board last year <laughs> and if there ever was a time where we could have gone down to have a part-time chamber director or somehow I don't know how they wanted to work it because it's not my job to tell them what they should be doing but they didn't even want to discuss it and Kathy probably could have made more money collecting unemployment with the state and the federal program than she did but one of the other board members told me that I was being unfair for bringing that up but when I asked her what she would be doing when we decided to cut out the Labor Day celebration because that's basically her main the biggest project that she's got and just thinking that I'm not telling them that they have to go to a part-time person or anything but all the other communities our size that don't have any director let alone a part-time one I'm thinking 27,000. I mean, we had Pam, you know, that we had to lay off. We've had other workers that 
we're good people that we don't have here anymore. And for them to have a director when volunteers could do a lot of their stuff, it just seemed like a lot of money for, especially now that Larry's here and he's doing so much for the economic development and stuff. And philosophically, the idea of the chamber and the city, I know they have the same goal, but supporting them and I wouldn't mind if they were totally self-supporting. Well, that's my thoughts on that. Is it the intention that economic development and the chamber serve equal but complementary tasks, or what is? I guess I haven't seen the bylaws or know what really the chamber is strictly focused on. Right now, they're running as two separate entities. Correct. Uh, when, when we hired an economic development director, we thought maybe like, like uh, the chamber has the development on that maybe they would somehow match. Uh, I, I think they work well together, right. but I don't think that the two separate entities have actually come together. Um, like I said, they work well together, but they still want to remain the two separate entities yep. from what I understand. You know? That's my understanding as well. From a council perspective, you know, I, I've been wrestling a lot, too, with um, uh, we've seen some very positive things, and I think this council has taken a very um, conscious step of putting economic development forward and making sure that that's what we want to focus on or at least give a conscious effort towards that. And I think we've been seeing lately um, the benefits of that direction uh, with what Larry's brought to the table. My wrestling a lot lately has been should we be funding that department more uh, because of the a the control that the council has on it um, for him and us working together so that we're carrying out the same goals together from the chamber perspective we we don't we can't have that influence or control necessarily because they are an autonomous board and that's how they're intentionally set up and that's not good or bad but i would prefer us spending the money in-house where we are putting these projects forward. And you look at a city like the size of Hull. They have 125 members in their chamber. Their chamber director is part-time. The city funds at $15,000. We have 80 members, and we fund at 27000 and we have a full-time director and a full-time economic development director. Hull's uh, economic development director's full time too, correct? He's actually, it's uh, uh, Jim Collins, the city manager, does the economic okay. development. Okay. But I just, I struggle with us giving that large of a chunk to a, an outside nonprofit when I think it would be better spent, whether what it was with um, incentives or whatever Larry deems is necessary within the community to do that. And we're getting to a point where these are not fun conversations to have ever, every year. I think we can all agree on it. But we're at the point in our community where we are not growing at a tax base, so we can't continue to fund these things and then expect that we're going to raise our tax levy every single year and then still expect people to want to come to our community because our taxes are already high in the first place. So when I look at that as a whole, I too would be in favor of cutting some portion I know we discussed doing a stepped up year so we're not shocking the council or the chamber, which I would be in favor of doing. But yeah, I think we have to have those continued discussions. Yeah, but I, I'm thinking they need a little shock because their status quo is just continuing without. I mean, it, like I say, they didn't even want to discuss it. <laughs> That was, you know, feels really why well, sit in the board. I mean, just let Kathy do what she wants and stuff. Now, unfortunately, we can't we can't change how their board 
acts right. or wants That's to yeah, decide. I, so I, yeah, I don't want to start micromanaging what they're doing. <clears> no, I right. don't either. But so. I'm just saying, you you guys, we have representatives on that board, though, yep. right? Yeah, that, I was on it for the last few right. years, and I just got so frustrated that they're not addressing that problem. Instead, they raised their chamber dues. They had a shortfall this year, and it would have been worse if they didn't turn over the fireworks fund from last year because they didn't use it, so the guy didn't charge them what they had paid, and they're going to get free fireworks this year. But, or not free. They paid for it. But it was very frustrating to discuss things and not, not accept reality that we can't afford it. And I couldn't say, well, you're not going to get anything, because I didn't have the right to do that. But I did say, you know. What are the businesses saying as far as their direction? Nothing? I don't know. You don't know? I, well, the they're supporting it. So. From, from my perspective, I think uh, the businesses are very impressed with the fact that our economic development director walked up and down the sidewalk this, uh, during all of this to help them get funding and help them get the PPP stuff figured out. And he was the driving factor of that stuff. So I think that speaks volumes that we just went through a pandemic and our um, business entities had that resource that we wouldn't have had before. So they would have been struggling more, I believe. Is it our direction to look at, you know, uh, how we can assist them to make that happen? I mean, as far as... They meaning, sorry, clarify, I'm not following you. Uh, the chamber, is, is it our job to, you know, talk to them and say, hey, we, we have another option for them at this point? Or it, as far as responsibilities? Or? Voting. For sure, I want to cut it 3,000 like we did last year. But I think we could be more aggressive and maybe cut it to 7 or 10 or something. But I'm not the only one that decides that. So. Is that something we can get an actual breakdown of what? those funds are being spent on. I don't think we have the purview for that either. That's what I'm just wondering if a percentage goes to this community activity or whatever. And organization is self-sustaining. Development has their own fund. Development has their own fund. So I'm a, I would assume if I remember. Oh, really? You're looking at the salary then? Right. Mm -hmm. Because on top of this, there's also, I mean, we pay utility. No. They no get, utilities? They pay the utilities to us. So they, they give a contribution back to about $125 a month. Okay. For the office rental or if you get a dollar a year, then the utilities are completely in the matter. And that's been set up. So what would, just saying, what would keep us under a $15 levy um, as far as cuts I all over?
I don't want to go on and make him think that I don't think the chamber doesn't contribute a good. I mean, they're really doing a lot of nice things for the city and stuff. But I'm just saying that the, the direction they're using the money is not the way I would. I know one of the board members told me, well, we're so used to not having volunteers, you know, because I told them Akron's got some really great programs going. And he says, well, now we don't have volunteers because they're used to having Kathy do stuff. And I'm going, well, if the program's worth doing, I mean. Right. And I believe in that conversation, that, that kind of link to maybe some of those examples not go away with their lack of volunteers. We can see how people really want to do it, you know, if we get to that point. Unfortunately, that's a realization I think every community is facing at different events. I think on the event side, you do really have an active, um, obviously COVID just really put a, just a break on all of that. Um, but I mean, for the events side we did have a really active yeah. yep. um, willing volunteers to, to help carry out some of those events um, there was a good momentum there um, obviously until this happened but um, so it's it's positive to see you know, those kind mm -hmm. of things and and knowing that things are going to start up again a little bit yeah but still I mean, but it's with the covid there wasn't a lot to do last year and right we had a full-time director and i i'm not saying it's bad to have somebody answer the phone when it rings, but can we afford it? <clears throat> so we've never actually increased the thirty thousand dollars since it was put in place. Well, when it was originally put in place, it was forty thousand dollars. Okay. But that direct Left, uh, we didn't. They did not refill her position, and it went down to thirty thousand as a contribution. Roughly, which year? Do you know? Well, five maybe. Oh, it's got to be at least that, yeah. If not more, yeah, it's got to be way more than that. Went into two. Yeah, that chiropractor. I mean, he left town a lot longer. Must be ten now, huh? I don't know. Yeah. Harvey says we've been actively defunding them for fifteen years by not giving them the two to five, two to three percent increase. But we never went into it saying we are funding that director. Right. We are we are supplementing their activities. The we are not funding the director. So if they wanted to increase the two to five, that was on their own to do it. So it still was never the responsibility of the council. of the budget that council has concerns of. Most of the others, I, I don't want to cut anything on that. That's, I think they're all valid, important parts of the city and community. I like the increases just because we're going to try something different, you know, on the streets and those kind of things over by the high school to, I understand that those going to cost a little bit more. I like that. Um, I think that that's what our community wants. That's what we've been talking about for a long time. So um, to keep those in place and to keep doing that. We could maybe suggest to the golf club just to have a fundraiser for that sometime this summer just to throw in a portion or whatever. Yeah, but I'm just saying have a separate tournament and just say it's for this one piece of equipment that's vital. I mean, they, we should have, when we give money, we should have something where they do a equal in-kind fundraisers or something to do a portion. 
not set it at any level, but at least have them out. That is a big chunk. Yeah. I would be okay if we cut some out of the chamber a little bit and then maybe cut a little bit from the new equipment and see if they can fundraise a little bit on that side too. So, Do you have a dollar? Let's say three on each. And that would get us underneath our that and our yep. raise the levy as much. And we're not putting it all in one organization. Mm -hmm. So I'll make that motion. Um, I'll second it. Motion by Rob, seconded by Travis. Uh, in the general fund payments sheet that we have been presented to cut uh, Chamber of Commerce by 3000 and the New Orleans Golf Club, will that be under the equipment part then? Yes. For 3000 is that correct? Correct. Motion and seconded? Sure. Okay. Further discussion? So we're increasing the levy? Is that so what that results in? Increase, we'll have to increase it some, not as much as our max levy resolution on the next item. Okay. Probably wonders if that's the best year to do it, but yeah. not everybody yeah. had a great year last year. Yeah. Some people are struggling. But, yeah. um, but we, we have another meeting we can right. discuss. So obviously this doesn't finalize it, it just sets this giving you sets a step before we publish our final budget. Okay. Comments, questions, or thoughts? That being said, the motion is a second for what we've been presenting tonight to decrease uh, Chamber of Commerce by three and the equipment for the Ward and Golf Club by 3,000, each of those entities. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Passes five to zero. Uh, staff will then, as Mike just said, put those numbers in and uh, bring back uh, further questions. Thank you for your thought processes with all of that. Which moves us to uh, the resolution 2021-09, resolution ordering the publication of and setting the public hearing for the max budget for f February 24th. And um, give us that number again, which is the, the max budget, but we can be under, correct? Yeah, um, putting, putting the... Uh, Forty-five thousand in the levy. Our max budget would be fifteen point oh four four five four uh, cents per thousand evaluation. Now, what this essentially means is we set this as we once we publish this, we won't go over that number. The maximum we can levy, even if we come back and say we want to levy a bunch more, that's the maximum. So this is another step that the state put in last year for cities, for transparency uh, in, in what we're doing in our budget process, as if we weren't transparent enough. But uh, so we won't go over that. This is quite frankly kind of a formality that we're required to do. Any questions about that? As you said, it's a new, new one. Resolved. Okay. Is there a motion for resolution 2021-09? So moved. Moved by Travis. Is there Second. a second? Seconded by Tim. Roll call vote, please. Resolution 2021-09. Olson. Aye. Kerr. Aye. 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 Five to zero. Roll call vote. Resolution 2021-09. 09 passes. Agenda item number six, approval of the union contract uh, going a five-year contract from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 
2026. Uh, this contract uh, we negotiated was based on the average of the, the foreman's salary. Uh, and the idea was uh, Travis was there a little bit. As far as I'm concerned, it went very smooth, went very uh, quickly, it, exactly at the spot where when we talked with council and staff as where we wanted to be. Uh, we talked about a multi year contract. This was the union's proposal to go five years. So uh, I feel that it, it's a good contract. So the raise raises effectively would be 69, 70, 72, 74, and 76 in the final year. All the other language in the contract stayed the same except for insurance was taken out, which is mandatory by law and automatic dues deduction from the city was taken out, which was also mandatory. And your addition to the... Well, I did, I did add under vacation pay. We've had it over the last two years where we've had people leave and we've hired people and we were fortunate enough to have people start with us that had significant experience um, in, their, in their trade. Well, because of the, of the union, we were not able to, we had, we had one guy that started, had 13 years experience. We weren't able to come in and offer him any vacation to start out with us. So he was leaving his job with 13 years vacation. We could not offer him any vacation because according to the union, if you do for one, you do for all. So we did, I did put a clause in there which I accepted that said, that management reserves the right to start somebody out in the vacation schedule based on experience and knowledge. We're thankful that uh, that process went very smoothly, as you mentioned, thanks to the council persons that are part of that and, and also the, uh, the folks from the union that were negotiable with that. Um, as we talked at our last meeting, uh, we have spent money to do that in the past from the city, and this year it was done in-house. So It took less time doing it in-house one time than it took us on the phone over three times the last however many years. So, yeah. Okay. Other questions about the contract? Any further questions? It seems to be um, fair, obviously, from... Union side and from the city side. And very good for a five year. That gives a lot of stability in, in both sides. So moved. Then a motion by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Travis. Roll call vote, please. Or excuse me, I'll just take a voice vote. Okay. Um, all in favor then of the approval of the union contract, uh, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. That passes <coughs> five to zero. We'll take a roll call vote on the next agenda item, resolution 2021-10. Uh, as I talked about at the last council meeting, uh, we have a lot at 105 Central Avenue. We inherited a home that was on there and tore it down. It's a 50 by 130 lot, so not overly wide. Uh, a Sue embroidery has brought Gary Locust new building. I can say that right. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, well, you just did. <laughs> yeah, I think they just closed on it. Anyway, um, they wish to buy that lot to build on. Um, they did make an offer of $1,000 for the lot, um, but in exchange for the lower selling price, they do plan on building on it, and they are forfeiting their right to a tax abatement on what they build. Uh, we felt it was a, a pretty fair trade off, but they want to move it to a on there and then build a, a larger facility on it. And front part, as you mentioned last time, being on Central, coming yeah, off of Central. Off Central and their parking lot. Okay. So moved. And a motion by Travis. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Jen. This is for Resolution 2021-10, which will publish the Notice of Public Hearing. Roll call vote, please, for Resolution 2021-10. Bell Hacker. Aye. Bucky. Aye. 
Olson? Aye. Bergsma? Aye. Aye. A five to zero roll call vote. Resolution 2021-10 passes. Thank the Huga Strats for their investment again in our community. Mm -hmm. Agenda item number eight, uh, local option sales tax discussion. Uh, last time it was uh, moot, but we have something back now from the Hayward Regional Health Care Board. Uh, it's been about a year now since we started sent them out an offer here last week, I believe it was, with two options. We've gone to some, trying to take smaller steps toward uh, an equitable sharing of that money. Um, and the, uh, our, our proposal to them would, would be to start out at 25% for two years and then increase 5% They met Monday night, and I got that response back today, which you have in front of you. Um, they have agreed to that. They have asked that it be fiscal year, not calendar year, start July 1st. They also asked to have uh, a review in January 2024, January of 2026, with two hospital board members, two council members, to sit down and talk about how it's going. Uh, and, and how basically it's going going on either side. They, uh, I, I think both of those are reasonable. I think that this gets us to where where we want to be. This also makes it uh, gets them where they want it to be on it as well. Uh, so I submit that to you for your approval or disapproval. Sounds good. Sounds good? Yep. Yep. Any motion on that? I yeah. think you should probably get the thing written up and then approve it. Okay. Have their board approve it. Okay. Any further discussion needed with that? No. Nope. Thank you. We thank them for taking their time and getting us uh, back their thoughts and uh, working working together with that. Discussion on a possible change to the Hayward and Zoning Code. General Minister. And this is just a discussion item, and I hope you didn't have some input, but uh, on this, we have a Because of all the requirements and everything we have, um, you have to turn them down. Then you go to the Board of Zoning Adjustment, and they even have stricter guidelines than what I had to go through in order to get something built or things like that. And, and I'm going to use an auxiliary structure as a, an example. Is right now our, our code limits an auxiliary structure, shed, extra garage. At a thousand square feet. So I have to turn that down and then I have to go to the Board of Zoning Adjustment. The Board of Zoning Adjustment can approve it except for it's got to be 40 percent the size of the home. So you got a 2,000 square foot home, all of a sudden 
their building they wanted to build. 1,200 square feet, I couldn't approve because it's over 1,000. Now it can only be 800 square feet, even if they have the lot room to do it. Um, and, and this is this is just one of them. We also have rules in there for materials used, and I get it that we want to have it of light material in the neighborhood. Uh, but with our materials used, especially now when Construction material wood is so high. Uh, you know, I got people that want to put up a, a metal building. If you look across the street, sometimes uh, Mr. Coyle put up that metal building over there. Uh, very attractive building. Uh, but and then also on some of our adjoining lots. If we have somebody that has lot A and they own lot B, but they're not all combined into one, they're separate. I can't let them put their out there because our zoning code says you need a main structure on that lot. I have uh, one person in another part of town that has a home, there's an alley, and he has the two lots behind it. So they're, they're kind of adjoining right across, and he cannot build his freestyle garage on it because it doesn't have a main structure. I find some of those cumbersome because some of these lots, quite frankly, like the guy I just mentioned, nobody's ever going to build on those lots. I get why they do it because uh, I don't want me to buy a lot on the other edge of town by somebody else's house, and it's the ugliest structure you've ever seen. So I, I feel if we could make some of those changes where we maybe make it okay for adjoining lots, or we give the board a zoning adjustment which is a group of five community members, the opportunity to look at these things individually and the opportunity to be able to approve it. Where right now, with all of our restrictions, we're taking that away from them also. Yeah. A, a lot of what we've been talking about is trying to get away from the shell so much. Uh, it might, If we're going to use shell, it might be shall not do it without approval of the Board of Adjustment. If the Board of Adjustment's going to approve a change, we would want them, you know, to give notice in the neighborhood, everything within 200 feet, 300 we feet. We have to do that with email, letter to everybody, yep. publish in the paper. Everybody knows about it. And then, trying to do anything that nobody knows about. Yeah. And then they could come to that hearing, and if they had problems, uh, the Board of Adjustment would have a chance to address some of those you know maybe there, there's going to be noise back here so we want to f you're going to have to put a fence up or we're not going to give you that uh, we've had you know houses out in the industrial areas one of them I remember and they had an old porch that was dilapidated and falling off you know and they wanted to put a nice deck on well you can't really do that um, under under our code. Sometimes things have gotten done probably that we didn't catch, but um, it would be nice to introduce a lot more flexibility. I have I've told Mike, I mean this isn't something new to Mike, this has been going on for years and I've been kind of saving some things. I mean there are parts that we cannot do and it could be that whatever we might write, if somebody wants to challenge some things, who knows, maybe the entire code you know, there might be a section or two someplace that might get tossed on us. I don't know. But I think we can introduce quite a little more flexibility if we can just trust that board to take citizen input. And then, you know, it's, for example, at one time I, th I think now, you know, perhaps I'm going to have an attorney come into my practice. But one of my ideas, if I didn't, was to go down and try to build an apartment in my office. It's a perfect place. The laundromat's across the street. The grocery store is half a block down. Senior citizens right across. You know, it's handicapped accessible. Tim's got a nice parking place right across the, uh, <laughs> across the street. Waiting for and, it to fall over. Yeah. And, you know, we can't do those kind of things. And, of course, that's been a bone of contention over the years, not to have any residences on Central or, you know, or at least on the main street of central but if people had to come in and and they had to upgrade the electric upgrade the heat uh, make it so that there was some parking and so that it was safe why wouldn't we want people down there in those empty buildings you know 
then they're down there to walk to the grocery store, walk to the to the cafes to eat and that kind of thing. I mean, we just want to get some flexibility in here and hopefully place some trust in the Board of Adjustment. And, and we may not be able to do everything we want to do, but a little town that you freeze sections out of for industrial development, when you haven't had a true industrial development almost, I'm not going to say since I've been here, but it's been a long time. And uh, it just doesn't seem you should freeze all that in place at least that's that's my opinion. I don't know if we can write something, you know, that that addresses it all, but I think we can move a little closer to something better for a town of 2,500 people that's kind of stagnated, but it certainly has people that would like to improve their properties. And that's kind of what we've been talking about. Mike put it on here for February 28th. I object because I don't think I'm going to get it done by February 28th. <laughs> That's all I have to say unless you have questions. February 24, by the way. Oh, <laughs> That's right. My daughter's birthday yeah. is the 28th. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. February 24th. Sounds good I'll to me. I'll show the 28th. But I just think we need to trust our board on adjustment a little more to make sure that we're not going to have some of these other mistakes. And otherwise, like I said, Especially for the homeowner, were really nice, but um, would have added some taxable value. Mm -hmm. We need more, so yep. let's do it. Yep. Thank you for bringing that to mm -hmm. attention. <laughs> you writing it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. We'll see. That moves us to uh, consent agenda item number 10, a request from Laverne Supermarket for a Class C beer permit and Glass, class B wine permit. Uh, beer and wine sales for Sunday sales. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Moved by Rob, second, second by John. Is that all right? Yep. That's how I heard it. <laughs> all in favor then of the consent agenda say aye. 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 Those opposed? Good, that passes five to zero. Our next regular stated meeting will be February the 24th. I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. So, so moved. Moved by Travis. Second, Second again. By John. All in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Hayward City Council is adjourned. Thanks so much for your attendance. <laughs>